Today's episode of the Tech Talk is about career development. So I'm going to be spending some time with Keith Atterton, who is a software developer, and he has over 20 years of experience in software development. So I'm going to be interviewing him and asking him questions that you need to know if you're looking to build a career in software development, especially in this year, 2022. So welcome, my name is Kazim Adebuega, and I think we should delve right in. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's episode of the Tech Talk with me, Kazim. Uh, today, I have Keith on the show with me, and uh, we're going to be talking to you today about preparing for a career in software development in 2022. Hi, Keith, and welcome to the Tech Talk show. Hi, Kazim. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. So let's start with telling a little bit about yourself now. Who is Keith and uh, what do you do for a living? Absolutely. Uh, my name's Keith Atherton. Uh, I've been a software developer for over 20 years now, uh, working for various companies in various different sectors. So sectors such as IT consultancies, uh, retail, manufacturing, uh, and even video game development as well. Um, I'm originally from uh, Nottingham in England, but I've lived and worked throughout the, the UK and the USA, and I'm currently based near Edinburgh in Scotland. And there I work for a construction company uh, using mostly the Microsoft tech stack. So things like C Sharp, lots with .NET, uh, SQL Server, and I'm currently learning more about Microsoft Azure as well. I think we should begin with uh, the why question, uh, because um, some people might be listening to us right now or for others that might also be consuming this uh, episode at the time. Um, they might be asking this question, you know, is software development for me? So they're really not sure uh, if they are to go into software development as a career. So uh, let's start with that now. Who is software development for and why should anyone learn software development? That's a really good question. Uh, but for me, I would say the main thing with software development is it feels like problem solving. And that's something I've always really enjoyed. It's something you can take on a challenge, you, you can work away um, and try and achieve something. And that's often helping someone, helping a customer. It can help them improve uh, how they perform a certain action or help them you know, achieve something new. Uh, and the thing that appealed to me initially with software development is that it feels immediate as well. You know, you can write that code, you can execute it or build a web page, and you can see the results straight away. And I've always found that really tactile and really, really cool that you can see something straight away, as opposed to when I was younger, I actually considered being an architect when I grew up. And typically with that, it could be months, years, it could be a much bigger project before you see those physical results from the, the, the projects there. So I always like that immediate feeling. You can, you can achieve something very, very quickly. Um, I think another aspect that appeals to me as well is that I love learning. I love learning new things. And certainly with software development, there are so many different languages, frameworks, uh, you know, design patterns and ways of working. Um, that there's just so much to get into. And these tech stacks, they change all the time as well. You know, AI and ML is becoming more and more popular these days. There's new fields opening up. Big data has been around for, for, for quite a while. That's growing and growing with data science and data engineering. Is that there's just so much you can take on. And it's that constantly learning is something that really appeals to me as well. Um, so again, based on that, software development can be quite a broad term. You know, it could be systems administration or web development or mobile app development, as well as these things we mentioned like data scientists and data engineering. So many of them are kind of interlinked and, and, and related very closely. So you wouldn't get bored. There's so much to do, so much to learn. <laughs> so if I've made up on my mind now to pursue a career in software development. So can you walk us through the different career options, the different career paths now available uh, to software developers? You know, that is also relevant to 2022. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there are there are many paths available. Uh, as you say, we, we talked there briefly about it being a broad term. If you want to specialize in database development or, or web app development or mobile, you know, these things are still growing into 2022. There's so many things that are still relevant. Mobile development is very, very popular. And again, we touched upon artificial intelligence and machine learning with today's computing powers it makes things like this more attainable certainly with things like cloud software which seems to be growing and growing in usage uh, particularly microsoft azure and uh, amazon web services the two main players currently in the market there's so many uh, you know there's so many different options there to look at the, the cloud technologies devops containers so many different ways you can look into software development so there are the paths in terms of those different roles Again, we talked about systems administration, software development, and so on. Within the roles themselves as well, it could depend where you work. Many companies, uh, they actually have a career progression scale. You could go from junior or apprentice you know, to, to mid-level, senior level, principal. Depending where you work, they, they may have these different paths available. And from there, you know, you could also look into management roles. There are things like team leading and lead developers where typically you could still be hands-on with the software development as well as guide and coach a team of developers too and that's something that i've done a little in the past and really appeals to me um, and if you did want to leave software development behind obviously there is management things like cto different director positions as well so there are there are things beyond software development but are still part of software development as well let me just quickly check with you. Which of the languages now would you recommend that a beginner starts with? That's a really good question. <laughs> That's a great question. I think still very popular these days and growing in popularity are things like Python, where many people do see that as a very accessible language to start with because it's not overloaded with too many symbols and too much complex syntax. It's a way to get started. There are so many good free tutorials on YouTube, as well as provided by places like Microsoft as well, step-by-step -step courses for free. You can just walk through and actually get hands-on and use these things as well. And the benefits with things like Python, it's very popular with AI and ML. You can use them, uh, you can use them for you know going into that line of software development too um so i think python is going to be a big one uh, web development constantly keeps growing as well and that's typically you know html uh, css and javascript with javascript maybe being one of the more richer programming languages of of, of those just there so again lots of options with those uh, for web development uh, me personally c sharp is the main language i use again you can get tools to use c sharp for free uh, you've got visual code things like this and visual studio the community edition as well again so many free courses and tutorials out there just for people to get started get a feel before they think you know what i think web development's for me and now I know what languages I need to change to and pivot and learn those instead. So uh, as someone who has worked the work now in the development space, uh, what would you advise a beginner to go with in terms of learning? Would you advise that they go with instructor-led kind of training or can they uh, acquire these skills by, uh, by self-study? Yeah, another good question. Um, I actually, I actually think there are really good benefits to both approaches there. Obviously, with an instructor-led, uh, it means you can ask questions, you can be guided, you can be coached. If you get stuck on one particular area, you can drill into that and spend more time on that and maybe get a bit more tuition and a bit more, uh, you know, uh, coaching with a particular area. Obviously, just you know, just reading or, or watching a YouTube video, if they move on, you can still go around and, and you know, search online for an answer or, or drill into something. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a different experience. But uh, yeah, with learning online, you do have things like YouTube. Um, there are also maybe uh, online 
uh, learning portals, things like Plural Sites, LinkedIn Learning, Coursera. There's so many out there, and and many are free, and many are you know discounted if you if you're out of work, or if you're if you're a student. Many of these offer discounts, so they you know they can be affordable options too. Um, but I would say that there's certainly room for both. Um, and if I could, I could give you an example. Actually, when I was I was in upstate New York for a health products company, and one of the smartest people I've ever worked with was a, a software developer there who was completely self-taught. It was all self-study, really smart, brilliant person. And the way he got started was actually as a machine operator on the, on the shop floor in, the, in this big factory. He wanted to learn more about IT. So he learned enough. He then applied for a, a, an IT support position with a company, which, which he got, and he did that for a few years. And then after that, he actually wanted to do coding. He knew he wanted software development. So again, he self-studied, he upskilled himself, and then he actually applied and got a position as a software developer. And he was one of the best that I've ever worked with. Incredibly smart person. So honestly, there are, there are merits to both. It's really whatever feels right for you what can you afford you know what are you looking for i would say but there are opportunities both both ways so let's try to put all of this together now given your experience and i also know you probably changed jobs a few times yourself so someone with zero knowledge you know what would be your tips on how the person can get started from that zero knowledge to acquiring the needed skills that they need to be job ready and that maybe also if you get jobs, you know, a lot of people want to acquire these skills so they can also work with it. So, so what would be your tips? Yeah, another great question. I would say, if you were starting out with zero knowledge, I think one of the best things to do is just ask around. You can ask people in your network whether they're local, whether they're you know friends or family, and you've also got the option to just reach out to people online. You know, if you're connected with people on LinkedIn and Twitter, and you admire what they do, I know a lot of people follow you, Kazim, being an MVP and, and being very knowledgeable. You know, people like yourself are great to speak to. You know, what's a typical day for you? You know, what are your experiences like? Uh, what tech stack? do you use you know um try and learn all you can and speak to people people who've got experience um and also having that network maybe you know it might help you find that first job as well so it could be you know, after speaking with someone like yourself of, well is your company looking to hire at the moment you know and if so what qualifications are they looking for um and if they do need qualifications but you don't have any at the moment are they looking to take on an apprentice or a junior person where they can provide coaching or or training, which is how I actually got my start. So when I was at university, I actually studied physics, believe it or not. And as the course went on, I, I was doing well. Uh, it was interesting, but I knew towards graduation, I didn't want to work in physics. This, this, it just wasn't for me. But along the way, I did a, a few programming modules and I realized that's where my interest was. I, I really enjoyed it. I took to it quite well. <clears throat> So for me, my first job was with uh, an IT consultancy in London, um, and they provided training for anyone like myself who didn't have IT qualifications, but they thought, okay, this person's got a, a technical degree, we'll take a chance on them, but we can put them on a training course to skill them up. So again, there are other the ways to getting that first job you don't need the it degree you don't you don't need it there, there, it's great if you have one but there are plenty of other opportunities to go in there as well um i think i'll probably just maybe add a couple of other tips as well there are things other ways you can still show enthusiasm to find a job and again me having a physics degree there are things like i joined a society called the british computer society in the uk or the bcs and it was actually on their job boards where I actually found my first job and applied for it and was lucky enough to get it. But that society also provided other things like learning uh, resources. There was tips on career progression and finding that first job and even mentoring programs as well. So it could be something like that could be valuable in many, many other ways to help you get started and find that first job. 
So there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of different things I've I've rambled on about here, but hopefully that helps. All right, thank you so much, Keith, uh, for coming on the show today. I really do appreciate it. And any last words before we say goodbye? I think uh, the only thing I'd like to say is thank you, Kazim, for having me on the show. It's been a pleasure. And I, I love your channel. Your YouTube channel is great. And if anyone's not following, please check it out because it's brilliant. And uh, if anyone has any more questions for me, any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Keith Atherton. I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter most actively. So uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Please, if you enjoyed this video, uh, do like it and share it and subscribe to the channel. So on that note, I would like to say goodbye. So it's a bye-bye from me now and kids, and let's do this again another time. Wow.